<clears throat> Welcome to the online presentation of the master courses at the Department of Engineering and Computer Science of the University of Trento. I am Enrico Blantieri and I will be the first speaker of this event. In the next one hour and a half, plus time for answering questions, me and five colleagues we will give you an overview of the master's that the department offers starting next fall. You can see the program of event following the links where you can also ask questions filling in a form. The Department of Engineering and Computer Science of our university is located in Povo, Trento, Italy, here you can see a picture taken in the internal yard of the compound that we share with other departments on the hills of Trento. There are two buildings where students participate to the lectures and where faculties and researchers do their work. On the right, there is a building that hosts the library and the canteen. In the next picture refers to the ICT days, an event that normally we keep each spring to share results and facilitate the contact between companies, students, as well as present our activities to prospective students. The University of Trento is a medium-sized Italian university with a recent history because it was founded in the 60s. Here you can see pictures of the historical building where the rectorate is. Being a recent institution has not prevented the university to enter among the best university in Italy, with also nice placement in the overall realm of the world university. Obviously, university rankings do not capture completely the quality of the university, but they give nevertheless an indication of the fact that serious work, both teaching and research and organization setup was done. Moreover, rankings take into account the quality and levels of the services that the university provides. The results of the rankings are good. In fact, we see that our university ranks fifth among the Italian university in the QS World University rankings, where it is among the first 400 globally. It is the first of the medium-sized Italian university in the chances ranking, and it was among the first 300 and the ninth on the Italian university in the Times Higher Education rankings. The University of Trento is deeply intertwined with the city of Trento. Trento is a city in the Alps that enjoys a strong administrative autonomy. That autonomy was in fact the driving force of the foundation of the university itself and the bonds with the local government are a distinct trait of our university. Also in the case of the city, the rankings give a picture of how nice is living in Trento. In fact, Trento scores high in the national rankings of quality of life, sometimes it is first, sometimes third, but always on the top. The surrounding area is mountainous with many lakes and the city itself has a long history. It was founded by the ancient Romans, named them Tridentum, along the Via Claudia Augusta that led to the provinces of the north. Here you see a picture in the city center with an historical house with external frescoes. The surrounding environment is great for sport and outdoor activities, skiing, hiking, and mountaineer, or swimming, surfing, and sailing in its lakes. The university itself organizes sporting activities. Let us now see information about our department. In the slide, you see some numbers that describe it. The numbers can change quickly because we are in the process of hiring. We are now 47 faculties with 38 people working in research and 17 as administrative and technical staff. Moreover, more than 150 PhD candidates are enrolled in our PhD programs. Overall, we have 1,600 students in our undergraduate and graduate programs. An important activity of the department is research. It is important in the context of this event because the research activities are projected into the advanced courses that a student can choose when enrolled in one of the masters. The activities ranges on a wide spectrum of topics and are organized in 15 research programs. The excellence of the activities are recognized by the ANVUR, namely the Agency for the Evaluation of University and Research, that awarded the department with the title Dipartimento di Eccellenza. You can assess the details of the research programs activities from the department website. Here you can see the other research programs. In particular two, Next Generation Networks and Quantum Information and Computing started this year.
The research activities are not just theoretical, but they also materialize in concrete projects with real impact and serious funding. Here are a few examples that include space missions, support for elderly, security, and medical application. The research activities in a university are always connected with education. Research cannot be done without PhD candidates that learn how to, to do research under the supervision of faculties or senior researchers. These are the PhD programs that involve our department. These PhD programs involve also other institutions like the Bruno Castle Foundation, other departments of the university and also companies. Being a PhD candidate means to learn by doing in a stimulating environment with motivated and motivating people. Can we decline the idea of learning by doing also for all the students or even for the prospective students of the high schools? The idea of merging all the components of innovation led us the idea of learning labs. What is a learning lab? It's a space where students, researchers, and industry experts share experience and develop innovative projects. In this way, schools, masters, research, and industry are evolving in a virtuous cycle of innovation. We are in the process of setting up nine labs, whose names you can see here. These labs will directly benefit the learning activities of the students in all our programs. The programs are shown in this slide, and in particular here, you can see the six master programs that we present today. Note that all the master programs like lectures are given in English, and uh, note also how three of them are interdepartmental. It is important to say how we plan the learning activities for the fall. The current plan is to offer a mixed teaching model. As you know, in the current semester, the learning activity is online. In the next year, the activity will be mixed with in-presence activity done in safe conditions. In particular, the access to the learning lab will be compliant to the CFIT protocols. The master courses that we we'll present in this event have been running since the time the department was established. Others are more recent and done in collaboration with other departments. One is new. The next speaker is Professor Nicola Conci, who will speak about the EIT digital offer and about one of our six master programs. So good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Nicola Conci. I'm a professor at the University of Trento at DZ. So what I'm going to present here, it's the offer that we give at our department from the EIT Digital Master School. So just a brief explanation about what the EIT Digital Master School is, right? So it's basically, it starts from the European Institute of Technology which is an independent body of the European Union that was established in 2008, trying to uh, bring up uh, the innovation uh, components in Europe, all across Europe. So the main idea of uh, EIT was to try and blend uh, uh, three main uh, pillars uh, that can contribute uh, to, uh, to, to bring in, uh, innovation uh, across Europe, uh, which is basically education, uh, research and business entrepreneurship, right? So uh, EIT Digital, it's a, a pretty rich architecture and EIT uh, in particular, as far as the education is concerned, uh, aims at developing innovative products and services, uh, start new companies and train new generation of entrepreneurs in the area of ICT. So uh, what is EIT Digital in brief? Uh, it's basically a unique program, uh, which is a uh, which tries to bring in the students uh, uh, what's called the blended education, meaning that uh, 
we try to put together uh, training at different levels, uh, including the master school, uh, a doctoral school, uh, a professional school, together with the partner universities all uh, across uh, Europe. EAT Digital is arranged in what are called action lines. And these action lines are five at this stage, focusing on the different uh, pillars uh, that EAT wants to promote. And in particular, we have action lights related to digital, digital industry, where the idea is to try and improve the industrial processes all across Europe. Then we have the digital cities, where here the idea is to drive the digital transformation of cities through centralized participative and collaborative interactions in between all the different city actors, which include, of course, citizens, together with the government, city service providers, and the companies working in the area. There is then a second, a third action line, which is in the area of digital well-being. As we all know, health has becoming one of the main issues we are actually facing. And uh, together with the aging of the population and uh, the costs uh, associate, associated to the uh, provisioning of services, uh, well, there is a lot of uh, room uh, to improve the services uh, and uh, the, the research uh, and the products uh, in this domain. Then we have two other uh, areas. One is about digital infrastructures uh, to improve and uh, uh, drive transformations uh, in the communication and the computation uh, uh, area, let's see, all across Europe, and together with the last one, which is digital finance. Uh, in terms of the master school, uh, EIT Digital proposes uh, a double degree master in uh, two different uh, universities. As uh, all masters, uh, they are made up of uh, uh, a two years programs, so, so namely 24 months. Uh, where students are expected to attend one year in one country and a second year in another country. So overall, the digital, digital consortium is composed by 16 different universities placed all over Europe, including, uh, uh, I would say, among all the best uh, institutions uh, uh, that we can find in all the different countries. So how uh, is it different uh, from a regular program? Well, as I mentioned before, it's a two years master program, which is held at two different universities in two different countries, with the big advantage for the students of having like two degrees, one for each school, together with the certificate award by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. This consists, the, the, the program consists of a, like a blended education format, which includes a technical majors of about of 90 credits, plus what is called an I and D minor of 30 credits. This also includes a summer school, an internship in a company, which is mandatory, all courses held in English, and the access to the EU network of top research centers and businesses. Right. So uh, to make the, the program more pleasant, uh, EIT offers uh, great parties and uh, events for the kickoff uh, together with the graduation events. So overall, we have like seven technical majors in terms of uh, for the master school, uh, which uh, more or less match the action lines that I have presented before. So, and the seven majors that we have are the cloud and networking infrastructures, which is a brand new program, the data science program, embedded systems, cybersecurity, human interaction and design, autonomous system, and visual computing and communication. So. In our department and in Trenton more in general, we are offering all the seven programs. So students have the chance of choosing the one that best fits his or her interests. So for additional information about the master school, I highly recommend to go on the website of the master school of IT digital, but where you can find all the necessary details the entry and the exit points, so namely the universities where you're expected to spend your first year and the universities where you are expected to spend the second year, right? Okay, so after going through the EIT Digital Master School, well, I can now present uh, uh, the master in uh, information engineering and computer science. 
information information and communication engineer sorry I hope you can see, still see my screen. Right, so uh, this is the first uh, master that you will see during this presentation. And uh, I'm the coordinator of uh, this master. So uh, let me go through the one of the main objectives that we are trying to promote uh, in our degree. The idea is uh, leading to professionals uh, which are capable to produce uh, and manage uh, technological innovation, where the idea here is to try to provide uh, the students uh, with all the necessary background uh, to bring uh, innovation on the technical side, but also on the management side. Uh, across all the areas that, uh, let's say, comprise the information engineering world, uh, what we are uh, focusing is uh, specifically the telecommunication area. So overall, uh, we are hiring, so we're looking for students. Uh, and among them, uh, the idea is to catch up all these uh, young and talented enthusiasts uh, where that have the ability of thinking out of the box, uh, willing to take uh, multidisciplinary challenges in a, an innovative uh, fashion. Why we're looking uh, for these candidates? Uh, because uh, uh, the staff involved uh, in the teaching uh, and, uh, and research uh, spans across uh, uh, a lot of different areas uh, of the information uh, engineering world, uh, which uh, include uh, vision, uh, computer vision, uh, uh, 3D analysis, 3D data analysis, detection, tracking, digital forensics, uh, next generation wireless net technologies and networks uh, like 5G and, uh, and beyond, uh, network design, remote sensing, rather biomedical imaging and ultrasound. So there's a plenty of uh, uh, areas in which you can uh, uh, be trained, uh, get new knowledge, uh, uh, do your thesis, uh, right? And uh, bring also your talent and your innovation. So the curriculum, uh, we actually have two different uh, curricula. One of them uh, is uh, what's called the standard curriculum. And the other one, it's uh, what we have defined as the ICT innovation curriculum. So overall, uh, the course is structured uh, in building blocks, uh, uh, which comprise a set of mandatory courses. Uh, in the standard curriculum, it's uh, 36 credits. Uh, and we have two different paths, uh, one of them in signal processing and understanding, uh, the other one in what we have defined as wireless and networking. Together with some mandatory courses uh, that are let's say, present uh, in both areas, uh, we do have uh, some elective courses, uh, in particular 18 credits, uh, where the students can choose uh, among uh, the, the uh, didactic offer that we have at our department, uh, the courses that they actually prefer. Together with that, uh, we have an internship and the final exam of 27 credits. As far as that, uh, as the ICT innovation curriculum is concerned, uh, again, we have a set of mandatory courses and uh, we have two tracks. One of them is the visual computing and communication, and the second one is the cloud and networking infrastructure. Over here, we also have two elective courses, plus the internship and the final exam, which is in this case of 30 credits. So this ICT innovation curriculum matches the EIT offer that I have given in the, in the previous presentation, and we'll see later how, uh, a little bit more detail about that. Right, so the tracks that we have, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, are the first one in signal processing and understanding, uh, where here we offer the courses of uh, uh, multimedia data security as a specialization, I mean, radar and the radio localization, computer vision, remote sensing, imaging and diagnostics. While instead for the wireless communication track, uh, we have uh, all those courses related to the networking and the, the wireless uh, uh, communication uh, problems, uh, so radar, communication systems, mobile and satellite, network modeling and design. And together with that, we also have uh, the third branch about the ICT innovation. So as I mentioned before, this one matches more 
the EIT profile. So it has uh, a lot of courses that are meant to give the students uh, an overview about uh, uh, how to develop a business, how to bring innovation and create products. So the mandatory courses uh, that we have in, uh, in all the programs are the course of, uh, on, in all the tracks, uh, are the digital signal processing recognition system, inverse problems and innovation and business in ICT. Right, so some uh, recent figures uh, about the course. Uh, so the course is, uh, um, the program It's rather new. It uh, uh, has been uh, um, established like uh, three years back. Uh, it comes from a long history of a course, uh, of a master course in telecommunications. Uh, and uh, like three years ago, we decided to uh, reshape uh, the, the offer, right? In order to adapt uh, to the changes that are actually available also in uh, the information engineering and the uh, telecommunications world. So overall, uh, what we have, it's like uh, there is a fairly high amount of students uh, that are coming from the area of Trento, but uh, the, the, the students attending our courses, uh, there's also a large number of students uh, who comes from abroad, uh, which matches like uh, 30 to 40% uh, every, every year, plus some others coming from the uh, rest of Italy. One of the good uh, figures that I guess uh, it's uh, useful for the students uh, is the employment rate, uh, which is uh, on average, uh, well, right at this stage, at this, uh, as of today, in uh, terms of 93% uh, within three years from graduation. So it means that 93 out of 100 students uh, are able to find a job within three years. So in terms of the access to the master degree, we have like uh, common uh, access rules, let's say for uh, the students entering the masters. In this case, in our, in our, uh, in our master, it means that, it, uh, means that we need, you need to have like an average of the previous career, which is above 22 out of 30, right? Together with a good level of English, uh, meaning B2 and above. So in terms of career opportunities, uh, um, our master, uh, I would say that fits uh, most of the jobs uh, that are requiring the design, implementation, management uh, of what? System and services to acquire, store, process, uh, and analyze information together with uh, the part of the communication side. So the communication devices, system, networks, and services. But we also provide the students uh, with hints uh, about how to handle project and manage project, projects in ICT companies. So if you if you're thinking about taking this uh, uh, as, a, as your future studying career, well, then you will then need to face uh, finding a job uh, after you finish your studies. Uh, and after some statistics and, uh, and seeing where our former students uh, went, uh, we have found out that uh, these are the areas, more or less, where students end up. So there's a, a, a rather large amount of students who end up uh, working in telecom uh, communications, uh, internet related uh, and uh, affine companies. Uh, plus, uh, there's a rather large amount of students uh, who find a job in the area of machine learning, uh, computer vision, uh, or also in the automotive, you know, as nowadays things are growing very, in, very uh, fast uh, in the area of, autonom of autonomous driving. And so uh, also this part, it's uh, like a very uh, important uh, uh, job opportunity. Then people work in mechatronics uh, together with other, some uh, a, a variety, say, um, number of uh, potential occupations uh, that go from consulting, biomedical uh, companies, uh, some of them find also a job in public administrations, uh, space-related agency, and also food companies. Right, so at the end of your program, you also have the chance of accessing the exam for the professional qualification to be what we call the Ingegnere dell'Informazione, which means that you can enroll into the Orden degli Ingegneri to have an additional professional qualification. So here are some of the companies that uh, uh, we've been working with. So some of them are local, some other are local with a lot of different uh, um, uh, components of their, uh, the companies all around Italy and all around Europe. So we have a, a strong uh, interconnection 
with the companies to provide students with internship and thesis. So going back to the beginning of my presentation, um, we are offering within uh, this master two of the tracks uh, that are, let's say, uh, sponsored by the EIT, naming the European Institute of Technology. And uh, these two are the, um, the major in visual computing and communications, which is an interdisciplinary program that blends uh, uh, the standard uh, programs, let's say in EE and CS, so electrical engineering and computer science. We offer both the entry and the exit point, so both the first year and the second year. And we have a specialization in uh, computer vision and multimedia analysis. Um, so the partner universities uh, involved in these programs are Alto, Finland, the Budapest University of Technology and Economics uh, in Hungary, the Royal Institute of Technology, KTH in Sweden, the Sorbonne University, which is a new entry since last year, and of course, us. Uh, the second program we offer, it's the Cloud and Network uh, Infrastructures, which is again an interdisciplinary program uh, crossing in EE and CS. Also in this case, we offer the entry and the exit point uh, with a specialization in the beyond, five, beyond 5G. Uh, the partners here are the Alto University, uh, the Technical University of Berlin, University of Rennes 1, Sorbonne, Royal Institute of Technology, KTH, and of course, again, the University of Trento. Right, so this concludes my presentation. I hope I gave you enough details to make up your mind. So I would then uh, again leave the floor to uh, Professor Enrico Blanzieri for the presentation of the Master in Computer Science. Hello, I'm uh, Enrico Blanzieri again, and uh, it's my turn to uh, to present the uh, the Master in Computer Science, Science of which I am the uh, I, I am the coordinator. Uh, computer science is a is a very very uh, wide topic, and so uh, that comprises a, a lot a lot of things in the in the, in the world in which we are we are living now so uh, the, the the master is is organized in two different curriculum the the first one uh, relies more on the on the basics of computer science uh, in terms of uh, science and technology whereas the other it's a uh, uh, it's more connected to the uh, to in the innovation so now i will present the two curricula uh, in uh, uh, in this way, and uh, uh, in the computer science and technology, uh, what we uh, what we have uh, is that uh, the students is faced with two mandatory courses that are computability and computational complexity, and a course on innovation and business. Then uh, it can make a choice. Uh, uh, between three different courses, uh, you have to choose two of them. And these co three courses are distributed systems one, machine learning, service design and engineering. And uh, please note that this, uh, uh, this list of three courses is changes with respect to the uh, manifesto of the, of, of the last year. So this is an uh, important uh, novelty in, uh, in this offer. And then uh, the, uh, the students have also the, uh, um, I mean, it has to choose between the six uh, uh, courses that are, that are offered uh, from communication electronic engineering for completing the, the interdisciplinary aspect of his, uh, of, uh, uh, of his work. Uh, on the other side, in the ECT innovation curriculum, uh, the, the same account, the number of credits is done, is, is mandatory and it's done with uh, uh, courses that are basically uh, about innovation and, uh, and, and, and and, and to learn a business uh, business um, uh, way of thinking for uh, really uh, leading to the, um, the the design and and also the the the, 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 the developing of pro of real products. Well, uh, this is a difference between the two curricula. Now there is something that is similar because uh, I, let's say at the very end both the curriculum includes a thesis and the internship and. Uh, uh, and an almost free choice of, uh, uh, of, uh, of courses. 
But what really makes the difference between the two is uh, uh, that in the middle, you have uh, that uh, you can choose uh, co courses from uh, uh, from different areas. Um, in particular, uh, in the computer science and technology uh, um, curriculum, you 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 can choose uh, uh, three courses, means eighteen credits for one hour, and then you are required also to choose uh, um, for, from the other areas as well. Whereas the, on the ICT innovation side is, let's say, more vertical in the sense that the choices are anyway uh, constrained, uh, constrained on the area. Now, let's see what these areas are in both curricula. So in, uh, the, uh, in the, the curriculum in computer science and technology, these areas are software and service architectures, system and networks, data science, there is also an area in bioinformatics and an area in computational foundations. Okay, in particular, the area of computational foundation is uh, again a novelty of the offer of the, of the current year. And uh, the idea was to uh, collect some courses that are uh, more on the, on, say, on the formal side and on the, uh, and, uh, and on the theoretical side, let's say, or, or on the foundational side. And we also added a couple of courses that are new, that are quantum machine learning and game theory. So if we go back to the curriculum in ICT innovation, also here we have different areas. We find again the uh, system and service architecture also in a decline in the, uh, with an ICT innovation uh, curricula. And then we have uh, the, uh, uh, the curricula, that, 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 sorry, the area that uh, coincides to EIT digital master schools that are the masters uh, on, uh, on EIT of which uh, Nicola have talked about uh, uh, in, the, in his presentation, in his previous presentation. And uh, these areas are uh, cybersecurity. So there is a master, an EAT digital master in cybersecurity, one in embedded systems, one in human computer interaction and design, one in data science, and one in financial uh, technology. Let us see this in more detail now. So uh, you see that uh, of this area in the, IC, in, the, in the curriculum of ICT innovation, uh, some of them are, uh, say, uh, entry and exit points, uh, both. Uh, these are cybersecurity and finance technology, that, by the way, is new. And uh, uh, whereas others have only the, uh, the exit point from the point, point of view of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the EIT, but nevertheless, the students can start to do the first year and then uh, there is the possibility of local recruitment for doing the uh, the double degree in the second year uh, anyway uh, talking about this uh, uh, finance technology master that is new this year that's called fintech uh, basically it, it, it put together content on machine learning distributed system and security with financial kind of content on financing accounting and finance simulation Okay, so these are some, some numbers about the number of students enrolled. So the, the last year we, we had 79 students and basically they, uh, they, 59 of them choose the curriculum in computer science and technology and 20, the one on, uh, on, uh, on ICT innovation. And here you can also see uh, the numbers of the uh, of the last uh, of the last or last few years, uh, in particular, to see uh, I mean how many how, how many people uh, get at, at the end the master with respect to the people that started. Uh, another number that it's important here is the employment rate that you see at one year is uh, 77, uh, whereas at three years is 93, and uh, uh, and then at five years is 100. Uh, but it's, it's important to observe that this employment rate is computed only on the people that was not working when, uh, uh, when the, the degree was awarded. Uh, however, our experience is that a lot of our students find work before actually receiving the master degree. Uh, so how to apply? So there is, there is a call that is going on uh, now. So uh, and you can obviously see find the, uh, the connection, the, the, links, uh, the links here. And uh, uh, 
and uh, and I think that's uh, that's it. So uh, overall, the uh, the courses is uh, is one that allows the student to choose uh, really uh, a lot a lot a lot of a lot of things and becoming exactly the kind of computer scientist scientist that that he wants. Thank you. And uh, now it's time for Professor Luigi Palopoli that will talk about the Master in Artificial Intelligence Systems. Thank you very much, Enrico. Give me two seconds to uh, uh, share my presentation. <laughs> So here it is. Okay, there you go. Hi all, I am Luigi Paropoli and I have the big pleasure to coordinate this initiative, this very new initiative of mastery in artificial intelligence system. Uh, I, I would like to attract your attention on both parts of the name, artificial intelligence and systems. Why? Because what artificial intelligence is, is pretty well known ever since the, we, we first started looking at science fiction movies. The new thing is that uh, there are systems out there. There are real systems that uh, make use of, arti of artificial intelligence. It's every day's experience to talk to your phone or to your Alexa personal device. Uh, if you happen to talk to doctors, uh, you will uh, learn that more and more they tend to use uh, uh, automated analysis techniques in order to uh, make uh, diagnosis and therapies. You know that autonomous driving is, is, is the next development of the, the next major development expected in the automotive industry. And of course, you know what robots are. Uh, they are no longer those bulky and intimidating machines that are limited to factories, but now part of our life. They collaborate really strictly with workers. They have to um, establish also an emotional contact with their, with their co-worker. And so it's, it's something that is uh, clearly never been seen in, in the past, okay? So uh, what uh, we had in mind when we launched this initiative was that, uh, okay, in the past, uh, there have been quite a few courses on artificial intelligence. So we know what, uh, is needed in order to learn artificial intelligence, or at least to learn what is now artificial intelligence. But our main emphasis was, what do we need to, to become a complete professional able to develop uh, uh, an artificial intelligence system from the grounds up? And uh, the, the answer we came up with is that uh, uh, you cannot only focus on a few topics, but you need a very broad coverage uh, of uh, uh, brain sciences because you need to know what uh, intelligence is. You, you, you need to know the classic uh, topics of uh, artificial intelligence, which is what makes a computer or a machine intelligence. You need to know the fundamentals of system engineering because you want to, uh, to make systems that actually deliver uh, the result. And finally, last but not least, uh, there are some uh, non-trivial non ethical and uh, low implications. You want to make systems that uh, behave, since they have a margin for autonomous initiative, they have to behave uh, correctly. Okay, given this broad spectrum, we have designed a, a course uh, in which we initially lay a broad foundation with 48 credits of mandatory course, we introduce uh, artificial intelligence. We give the basic of signal uh, image and video processing, natural language understanding, machine learning, AI and ethics, as I said before, and artificial and biological neural systems. Then once you have created this, laid down this foundation, you can go a little bit deeper inside. And uh, uh, there you are, you have the possibility to choose 12 credits uh, in the so-called in-depth group of courses. In these 12 credits, you have the possibility to steer your, your curriculum towards the topics and the type of systems, AI-based system that interest you the most. 
and you have uh, topics like automated planning, automated reasoning, uh, optimization techniques, human machine dialogue, introduction to robotics, autonomous software agents. You can pick uh, uh, 12 of these credits. And then after uh, these two uh, blocks of, uh, let's say, uh, fundamental uh, understanding of the mechanism of AI, you know, of AI, you can move to your specialization. We have uh, quite a few possible specialization. The first one is uh, in robotics, and the, then, then you can choose eight if you go for this specialization, because you can choose one. Uh, then, you, uh, then you will learn how the robot perceives the environment, how it uh, uh, decides to uh, plan its action in the environment, and then how it executes the action in an optimal and intelligent way. Oh, so each of these is covered by a six credit uh, uh, courses that you can take. On the contrary, if you are more interested in, in computer vision, you will have uh, uh, to learn the basics of uh, the foundations of uh, uh, AI techniques for computer vision, and then move on uh, to the advanced uh, stuff, which is on the leading edge of the current industry, and then also follow uh, the trends and the application in computer vision that are the most uh, uh, recent advances in tight connection with the research world. Then we also have a, a possibility of uh, studying methodologies. In these methodologies, the idea is that you don't want to go uh, for one specific choice of system. You want to learn methodologies that allow you uh, to design any type of system. And then what you, uh, you, you do in this case is to um, learn uh, advanced topics in machine learning and optimization, which are six more credits. And then you can take two more courses in the group of the in-depth uh, courses that I have talked about uh, before. Then there is another, um, another uh, specialization, which is in AI and innovation, which is a close relative of the EIT um, courses that uh, uh, Professor Kohn just talked about before. So the idea here is to learn how to make a business out of your AI enabled uh, project, uh, products, sorry, and how to use AI to boost the, the, the business processes, right? So all of this is condensed in three courses that, that you, can, uh, you can take if you want to go for this specialization. And then we have uh, yet another specialization, which is on uh, systems. In this case, uh, uh, you want to uh, go uh, deep down and learn the basic of ultrasound technologies for medical application. You know how topical disease, given the current uh, scenario and the COVID virus um, um, uh, outbreak. Then uh, uh, imaging and diagnostic techniques that can be used uh, for various purposes and sensing and radar technology. So in this case, you learn AI for a large category of system that can be used for geosciences or for medical applications. Uh, finally, I, I, I have to stress that there is the possibility to take an, a completely different path. This time, uh, we uh, don't uh, commit to any specific specialization, but we create uh, um, um, an, an intermediate uh, expertise between uh, uh, computer science and brain sciences, because roughly 30 credits uh, in addition to the introductory credits that we, we you take in the first years, would be made in the CMEC uh, Center in Rovereto, and you will uh, uh, learn uh, the foundations that make our uh, brain work in, uh, to, to, to understand language, to create social bonds, etc. And the reason why you do this is because we believe that there is the need for a type of profession that is also able to carry the experience of what takes place in the human mind into the uh, domain of the robots. Clearly for all, all the paths that we have seen, you have the possibility of uh, taking 12 credits of free courses and 30 more credits are devoted to the stage and the thesis. Okay, uh, finally, it's my turn uh, to, to talk about uh, uh, the career opportunities. Uh, contrary uh, to my colleagues, I don't have a, a large story behind because the course has just uh, been launched, so I'm not able to give you any figures 
on the average rate employment rate, etc. I, I can give you uh, the idea of what our design um, intent was, right? So we want to create, first of all, the, this is a degree in computer engineering. So it's framed within the framework in Italy of engineering informatica. So the natural inclination of our graduate students uh, is to design and develop um, computing systems that, that are based on artificial intelligence. And you know that the application areas are uh, for this are uh, already in a large number and are growing with an exponential rate. Uh, rate. Let me just uh, um, let me just mention autonomous driving, uh, human machine interaction, speech recognition, precision agriculture, cognitive robotics, precision medicines, uh, industry 4.0, banking and financial service. So AI is needed everywhere nowadays is the is the real mainstay of computer uh, engineering and ai systems are required all the more so i don't think uh, that uh, that uh, there will be any issue in finding a good job after uh, after uh, taking a course like this but if you don't believe me you can uh, uh, take a uh, look at some uh, figures that the most uh, prestigious um, companies in the world are producing regarding the, 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 the amount of money that is mobilized by AI, which reaches 4 trillion euros worldwide and uh, is expected to create 130 million jobs in the near uh, future. And uh, uh, the interesting thing is that you can see the average uh, pay a, a wage of the jobs in the United States is higher than the average uh, years. Okay, let me just conclude the saying that students in possession of uh, uh, any degree, so not only uh, bachelor in science, uh, computer science can apply insofar as they have studied at least 12 credits of uh, computer related uh, topics. There are 80 positions available and uh, the call is now open. So you can apply anytime you want. And clearly you, go, you can go to our website, which is also linked in the, in the, in the site that launched uh, this event in order to find more information about uh, the course. Okay, so this is all I wanted to say. So I can now leave the floor to Professor uh, Zancanaro. Uh, okay, good. Hello, everybody. One second, I try to share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, we do, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. You, can, you can go on, Massimo. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. My name is Massimo Zancanaro. I'm a professor of computer science at the Department of Psychology and Cognitive Science. And today I'm going to present you our master program in human-computer interaction which is offered in collaboration between these two departments. Uh, so first of all, what is HCI? Uh, Human-computer interaction is a branch of computer science, which is specifically devoted to the last mile, let's say. It is how to design, evaluate, and implement digital technology for human use. It is truly interdisciplinary since it requires understanding of models of humans and society developed, usually developed in the field of psychology and sociology. So this is the reason we want to study uh, HCI at cognitive science, because cognitive science is uh, uh, and the interdisciplinary field of study uh, that embraces the study of mind and intelligence using philosophy, philosophy, psychology, artificial intelligence, computer science, neuroscience, and so on. Therefore, it offers the perfect context to embed a learning path that combines technologies and understanding of human behavior. Uh, 
the goal of our master program is to train professional and researchers uh, able to understand the complexity of human cognition, behavior, and emotion, consider the diverse human values, interests, and needs, and embed this knowledge in computing artifacts and technologies. Uh, our courses, which are uh, given both from the Department of uh, Cognitive Science and the Department of Computer Science, are divided in five blocks. For each of these blocks, you, you have some compulsory courses and you offer some elective courses that you can choose to deepen your understanding of uh, these blocks. So the first one is in core HCI. Uh, so you will learn about cognitive ergonomics, participatory design, prototyping of interactive systems. You can deepen your knowledge of visual design and design epistemology and ethics. Then we have a focus on methodology, and this is compulsory for all students to investigate the methodology from qualitative and quantitative, uh, which belongs to the discipline of psychology and sociology. Then we are an area of social interaction, which is very important nowadays. Uh, we have a, a, a compulsory course on social interaction, uh, which is uh, the base of uh, uh, social psychology, but with special focus and a special target on designing uh, digital technologies for social interaction. And then you have two elective. One is the, for designing for social inclusion for uh, the very specific, uh, specific uh, aspects of uh, society. And then you have in a, uh, a course uh, more specific to educational technology. Then we have the very large area of brain computer interaction, the neuroscience. Uh, in particular, we you will learn in the computer courses uh, the basis of uh, cognitive neuroscience and how uh, and brain computer interaction. And there is the possibility of deepening the understanding of this uh, very important and uh, aspect of uh, uh, human computer interaction uh, through an elective which is specifically devoted to neurological disorders, so in the clinical area. And finally, we have the multimodality, we have uh, the effective computing, which is a very large uh, area of investigation nowadays. Uh, with a specific uh, elective on multi-sensor interaction. Then, of course, uh, you have these 12 free uh, credits, which uh, uh, encompasses two or three courses that you can choose freely between the courses offered in the Department of uh, Cognitive Science as well as the Department of uh, Computer Science. And to some degree, also, you can choose from courses uh, or, or the rest of the university. Uh, we have a, a put particular care in uh, having a very long internship and a very long uh, thesis uh, uh, period. You have uh, over, over a semester, the last semester, which is basically completely free for professional or research experiences that started with an internship and ended up and is completed through the thesis uh, writing. Uh, we also put uh, a lot of care in uh, exchange agreements with, agreements with other universities through the Erasmus program, uh, which in Europe have a, a similar program which are similar to ours. In particular, we have a, a signed agreement with the University of Troyes, which is uh, close to Paris, the Technical University of Eindhoven in the Netherlands, the University of Applied Sciences uh, of Upper Austria, and the University of Siegen in Germany. Uh, our teaching uh, will, uh, happens in two locations, uh, the, uh, in Povo, uh, at the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science, uh, uh, which is, uh, I've been illustrated uh, a few minutes ago by Professor Blanzeri, and also at the Department of Cognitive Science in Rovereto. This is offer uh, a unique opportunity to have access to the, to the facility and laboratories of both departments. Uh, Rovereto and Trento and Povo uh, are uh, quite close, are just 15 minutes apart by train. And our teaching schedules for compulsory and elective courses consider the traveling needs. There are few days in Rovereto and few days in Povo, so you are not requested to travel the same day in the two location. But this uh, being in a two location will, um, is uh, explicitly, has been explicitly programmed or planned in order to enrich your uh, learning experience. 
the our course started in the academic year 2015 and 2016 and so we don't have a, a lot of data i mean we don't have official data uh, on satisfaction and employment from alma laura which is the national authority uh, that provides data about employment um, but i can show you the uh, progression on application and enrollments in these years uh, we have a, um, a top of a maximum 30 students per year and uh, during the year the number of applications increase very much uh, especially for non-eu uh, uh, students and uh, this year for in the first call we have uh, uh, more than double the application with respect to the available seats and um, the second call will be uh, issued late june um, if you choose to do research in human computer interaction, which is a, a, yes, a, a very a timely compute, um, research topic in computer science, uh, you can apply to uh, a lot of PhD uh, schools around Europe and in the US, uh, including also the, the School of ICT in the, the, the Department of Computer Science. But we also have a PhD program in cognitive science uh, in which uh, uh, one of the topics uh, uh, there are psychology and educational and training, but also there is a specific topic on cognitive technologies uh, in which some of our students are um, usually applied. Uh, so I'm basically finished. Uh, for further information, you can consult our webpage or uh, send, um, send me an email uh, on this uh, uh, email address. So I'm done and I've I think uh, I will uh, uh, leave the floor to Professor Enrico Dominici. Yes, it's time to pro for Professor Enrico Dominici to talk and present uh, his Master on Quantitative and Computational Biology. Enrico? Yes. Okay, you, you can get started, please, if you yes, want. Okay, thank you. So my name is Enrico Domenici. I'm professor at the Department for uh, Computational Integrative and, uh, Computa and uh, Cellular Biology. And I'm going to present you this Master of Science in Quantitative and Computational Biology, which is actually uh, quite a new program. We have uh, started this program four years ago. We have a lot of interest from uh, many students uh, from all around Italy and from uh, Europe and even outside Europe. So uh, as you will see uh, the, um, did I share my screen, sorry? No, Enrico, we don't see your screen. Okay, you let wish to share it. One second, because I was muting and then I, yeah, let me get back. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry for that. Uh, so the Master of Science in Quality Computational Biology is actually trying to address uh, this need, this is really an emerging need, uh, which arises from the uh, evolution of big data in biology. As you can see, this is uh, uh, taken from the Fortune magazine. There is a, a huge need for a, a quantitative approach and computational approach uh, to big data to try to elucidate the molecular mechanism underlying diseases, the molecular mechanisms which uh, make us different. And uh, this has actually, uh, to me, uh, created the premises for um, uh, the, the birth of a sort of a new 
uh, generation of scientists. As you can see here in this different spotlight, we're talking about uh, new species of biologists, and actually to me is a new species of, of uh, computer scientists, which are actually are trying to exploit the, uh, uh, the massive data uh, coming from the uh, recent genomic and computational advances. So biology is actually definitely going uh, digital, I would say. And as a consequence, uh, we are assisting a, a real explosion of uh, bioinformatic uh, careers, in particular computational biology career. So there are ample opportunities. And uh, at Trento, we actually wanted to address this uh, emerging needs. And we actually have key competences and key skills in uh, the uh, topics which are required to address big data in biology, which is biology, uh, computer science, engineer, mathematics, physics. And we have a lot of interaction between the four departments at the University of Trento who have uh, put together the effort to realize what we now call QCB among us, so the Quantity and Computational Biology Master of Sciences. So the idea here is to um, uh, exploit from one end uh, the, the uh, uh, skill set that we have in order to transform, translate big data into knowledge, but with a specific accent to the quantitative application. So this is somehow different from um, classical master of science in bioinformatics because we are given a strong emphasis on the application of biomathematical and biophysical models. That's why we call it quantitative. And um, so the second idea, and that's very interesting as a sort of experiment, which we see it works in, in, in reality, we're trying to blend uh, students coming from different perspectives, from different uh, background, biotechnologists, computer scientists, uh, from uh, mathematics and, and from physics. And we put them in uh, four different tracks, which uh, is actually based on their uh, prior background. And then we try to um, uh, sort of to, uh, to blend them uh, uh, in a way with a number of uh, courses which are uh, partly mandatory for the specific track and partly elective. So in a way that after the first six months, they have sort of a, a common ground to be able to uh, 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 understand and address all the complexity of the uh, big data in biology. I'm showing you as an example, the. Um, uh, the courses which are offered for the computational track, which is probably the one which is more interest uh, uh, for you. And so as you can see here during the first semester, we are actually trying to bring you up to speed with the uh, uh, most recent uh, technologies and applications in uh, molecular biology and in experimental and computational biochemistry. So these are the courses which should bring students with computer science background at a similar level to uh, biotechnologies and the same will apply for students coming from uh, mathematics, for instance. And then you will have the opportunity to uh, deepen your uh, um, quantitative uh, knowledge in terms of uh, network based data analysis, modeling and simulation in particular. There are actually four courses which are dedicated to this. And on the top of this, then you have the possibility of select among a quite a uh, diverse variety of courses to expand your uh, um, uh, research skill and your based on your research interests. They are actually color coded according to the different departments who are offering these courses. So in theory, uh, you have the chance of taking up of uh, up to six of these uh, uh, modules, and uh, if you consider, for instance, expanding into the area of uh, uh, physical modeling or biophysics, probably you will select those exam if you consider to, to deepen your interest into the machine learning application, those will be your courses. And you also have the option to uh, select free choices among our offer, as well as among all the offer, which is uh, part of the uh, University of Trento. So, in the end, what is most important for us and for me, I guess, is actually how you shape your uh, uh, profile uh, uh, based on the selection of your trainship and, and your thesis. 
and we have actually ample opportunities for internship within the Trentino area, within Trento, not only provided by the four departments who are contributing to these uh, courses, but also, uh, for instance, at uh, the Foundation Bruno Kessler, at the Predictive Model and for Biomedicine and Environment, at the Institute of Biophysics, at the uh, Fondazione Edmund Mach, for instance, those are all uh, a foundation or institute who have a strong interest into, uh, into uh, computer science, modeling, mathematical modeling, genetic uh, and, and genomic machine learning application, as well as the Foundation for Computational Systems uh, Biology uh, at uh, Rovereto, where there is uh, quite a deep uh, uh, skill set in uh, systems biology. And you should also take into account that there are also multiple opportunities outside, outside Trentino area, and we have Erasmus program, we have a number of partnerships with uh, European universities. So in the end, what actually makes uh, uh, you as a, a skilled computational biotechnologist, as a uh, bioinformatician, uh, or a data and systems biologic analyst, or finally, as a computational biologist, very much will depend on the type of elective that you have chosen, on the type of trainship and thesis. But definitely, these are all uh, profiles which have a huge uh, market need out there, as far as we can see. So uh, the deadline for application is uh, at, uh, 24 of June. You can find more information at this international site and similarly at this page uh, where you have a lot of additional information on the uh, regulation and the course program and don't do not hesitate to just send me an email at this address thank thank you very much enrico uh, so now uh, we will uh, we will move to the last uh, presentation and we will have uh, some time uh, for question and answer uh, perhaps <laughs> and uh, and the last presentation is given by professor agostinelli and is the master in data science please uh, claudio you can take the floor yes thank you luigi and thanks to everyone to be here. My name is Claudio Agostinelli. I'm a statistician and I'm working at the, the Department of Mathematics. I'm going to share with you some slides I prepare to present the Master of in Data Science. Just a second. One more second. Here we are. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about master program in data science. This is a new program in the sense uh, uh, this will be our the next will be our third year. So we just started, and uh, uh, it's a very collaborative. Uh, uh, effort. I will talk to that in a moment. Before to start, uh, I would like to say something about what is data science. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to use the words of David Donoho. Let me let me read for you. Fortunately, there is a solid case for some entity called data science to be created, which will be a true science facing an essential question of a lasting nature and using scientifically rigorous technique to attack those questions. This will be notion of data science is not the same as the data science being taught today. Although there is a significant overlap, there will be notion response to a different set of urgent trends, intellectual rather than commercial. Facing the intellectual trends needs many of the same skill as facing the commercial ones. 
and seem just as likely to match future student training demand and future research funding trends. The whole be notion takes data science as the science of learning from data. Will, with all that this entails, it matches is matched to the most important development in science, which will arise over the coming 15 years. This is what uh, David Donald says in a very long speech he had in 1915. And you can find all the speech together with uh, a discussion in a paper he published in 2017. You find it in, uh, in uh, the reference here. And I think it's a quite, uh, important things that to say that data science, it would be the science for learning from data. So down to earth now. Um, globally, at this moment, uh, we collect about 43 zettabytes of information. Okay, just to give you an idea of how fast uh, data are collect data informations are collected. Uh, we can say that in, in the last two years, we generate more information than in the whole human history. But what is more interesting about this fact is that 80% uh, of this uh, information is a non-structured form, so not very easy to use. And 99.5% will never use, is not used, will never use or analyzed. So what do we do as a data scientist? Well, I make an, the comparison with data engineering here because I think it's interesting for most of the audience. But uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to stress uh, uh, three points about data science and data scientists. The first point is that you must be able to, um, to handle data. So you must have uh, computer science skills. On the other hand, you must be able to analyze data. And so you must have statistics, mathematical, machine learning, data analysis, the domain, expertise. And finally, more important, you must have a comprehension, you must understand the type of phenomenon is under study. So yes, very three uh, points that, that could come together, should come together in a data scientist. That's why our program uh, is an interdisciplinary program. I will tell you something in a moment about that. Uh, just to finish the comparison, let's talk about salary. And the salaries are very competitive. As you see from this uh, data, I took it from PESA and also uh, data I took it from Forbes. A data scientist is the best job in the United States uh, four years in a row. So just to give you the idea how fast this field is growing. Now, what are we doing at the University of Trento? Well, at the University of Trento, we have this program. The director of the program is Professor Ivano Bison from the Department of Sociology. And the reference structure is the Department of Mathematics. But we have a consortium uh, and as you see, it's a large consortium. Uh, I'm not going to mention all, all of them, together also with the Fondazione Bruno Cassia. And as you see, just from here, it's a very interdisciplinary. We have so many different researchers that are working uh, on this program, which make really interdisciplinary program. On well, admission, uh, for the admission, you should have knowledge of at, at least three types of, of topics. So computer science, uh, sociology, economics, and psychology or law, mathematics and statistics, and some good knowledge of English. Um, in case you miss some of these uh, requirements, uh, we organize a summer school uh, to just try to cover what you miss. And you find the reference, uh, the website here in the slides. The program is organized into entrance curriculum. Curricula means that we have a why, and uh, this is because we want to homogenize uh, uh, people from different background. 
So we have, uh, let's say, track A, curricula, curriculum A, which is mainly for computer scientists, uh, mathematicians, physicists, statisticians, engineering. And we have a curriculum B for sociology, economics, psychology, and all, let's say, human uh, sciences. The first year is quite packed, um, and there are no much choices on the courses. Uh, these are the common, the common courses. So for both tracks, doesn't matter which curricula your curriculum you are following. And um, as you see, there are uh, the first courses in computer science. Let's say so we have a, a course on applying machine learning, a big data technology, and data visualization. Data visualization is quite important in data science. Then we have a course, uh, I mean, quite important, uh, which is on statistical learning to put the basic ground of the theory in statistics. And then we have uh, one course is in law because we need to treat data and to know how we can handle uh, the data in terms of, of the law. And finally, some, some requirement for, for the English. Then, uh, depending on, on, the, on the curriculum, uh, you will have to follow one of the two. In particular, I think the audience will be more interested in, uh, in A, in curriculum A, which is the one for computer scientists, essentially. So you will have another course in, in, in computer science, and then two courses, one in sociology and one in economics, sociology and psychology psychology and in, so, so in, in um, economics to fill the gap. So that at the end of the first year, uh, students will be quite homogenized in their background and they can talk to each other. In fact, the, most of the work uh, the student has done, uh, it, it's, it's really matching people from different backgrounds because they start to have uh, a similar language. Uh, second year, is uh, full of activity and we have uh, we, we can cover uh, several different uh, aspects here i mentioned the main ones um, i want to say just here that um, um, the th the first semester the last semester is more or less free from classes and you will have time for internships uh, uh, for going abroad or for for your do for doing your thesis so, call is open. Uh, we have uh, uh, 48 positions for the EU applicants and eight positions for non-EU. The call for non-EU is already closed for this year, uh, and we already assigned the positions. For the EU, we, we just uh, make the position for 20 people, 20 students, and now the second call is open. It will close on June 5, so hurry up if you want to subscribe to, to this program. You will you have the details here uh, down in the slide. So if you want to have more information, please contact the director of the program, Professor Rivan Bison, and visit the two websites dedicated to this program, which is Data Science Unity and IT and the official uh, website from International Unity and IT. Okay, this is all for this time, and see. I hope to see you around in Trento. Okay, thank you very much, Claudio. Uh, given uh, our our uh, initial technical problem, we've been uh, horribly late, but still, uh, I would like to take uh, two or a few more minutes of the patience of our. Uh, uh, listeners in order to respond to some of the questions uh, uh, they have uh, uh, raised. Um, in particular, uh, one of the questions is, is general and say, can I apply for uh, more than uh, one, uh, one uh, master and then choose the, uh, to pick the one that uh, at, at some point, I decide is best for me as far as I am within the ranking. I would say yes. I don't see any any problem in this. This is a quite a common practice. 
uh, although I sincerely hope that this round of uh, talks have given you uh, concrete roundings for uh, for making uh, an informed choice and, and be committed uh, to, to, to what you want to do in, in the future. Another thing uh, uh, I would like uh, uh, to ask uh, uh, to Nicola because he is uh, related to the EIT. And then, and then the question is, what's the difference between the master in computer science and the master offered by the EIT digital? both at the University of Trento. Nicola, maybe you, you may wish to quickly summarize. Yeah, sure. So uh, there is also another question that I have seen that it's quite common. So why I have presented EIT, although the deadline is already passed. Uh, so I will try to quickly answer to both of the questions. So uh, the point of, uh, first of all, of presenting EIT at this stage, it's uh, that um, uh, together with the two ordinary calls that are available every year, and say by made up available by made available by EIT, uh, there is a, a third option, which is what it's called the local recruitment. Um, so through the local recruitment, what happens it's that students uh, that are enrolled, uh, let's say that are already in Trento, have the chance to start the, the master degree as a student in Trento and then transfer to the EIT later. All the details are actually available on the website and so you can look for that uh, easily. Regarding the difference in between the ICT innovation course, let's say the, the path in ICT innovation course uh, in Trento and the path ICT innovation offered by EIT, well, uh, we have decided to offer the ICT uh, track uh, on both uh, the uh, on both the computer science and the, the, the communication uh, uh, degrees uh, um, in order to give them the chance uh, or, or to give all the students the chance uh, to take the ICT innovation uh, track uh, also in Trento, right? So directly in Trento. So you can spend both years here. Instead with the IT, you have the mobility, you have the double degree and you have all the advantages, let's say that I have presented before, but still you can do the same thing also by staying uh, for the entire two years in Trento. I hope this answers the question. Okay. Uh, in particular, I would like to point out, and maybe Enrico can help me in this respect, that if you are interested in the computer science master, and uh, uh, if you uh, are a business-oriented person, you want to go for that uh, direction of courses, uh, but you don't want, for some reason, to go all through the double degree um, path, you can still do the, the, the laurea uh, here entirely in Italy with a clear uh, twist toward the business. Enrico, can you elaborate on that if you want? Yeah, see, thank you, Luigi. Um, yes, the, the curricula in ICT innovation, uh, in, uh, I think in, uh, in, in, in all the degrees in which is uh, activated, in particular for computer science, uh, is a uh, is a curriculum that a student can choose uh, even if it's not uh, being selected for uh, EIT or even if it's not been yet selected for EIT and uh, and uh, so exactly it can it can, it can do the ICT innovation curriculum uh, locally let's say doing two years in uh, in Trento and so the the actual difference between the uh, the um, the master in computer science and the master in digital is that the masters are embedded in the uh, in the degrees in computer science, but also in the uh, in engineering degree. Uh, so uh, so it's, it's it's really it's really a plus within uh, the 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 masters. I hope that I answered. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question uh, I would like to uh, to ask uh, uh, to. Uh, Enrico, because uh, maybe the, the best person would have been uh, Massimo, but uh, he couldn't, uh, Massimo Zancanaro, but he couldn't attend all the meeting. So uh, the point here is, is that some uh, of the students wonder if uh, taking uh, courses in multiple uh, places and also multiple departments uh, uh, can, be, uh, can be easy or can be disturbing as an experience because of logistic reasons, but also because of, uh, of the different mindset, perhaps between uh, uh, the professors in the in the in the different departments. Enrico Domenici, I, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. 
so basically um, the question is how can you mix the exam across the different departments within the master of science in quantity and computation biology or in general in general but uh, i think that given the fact that you you, you are <laughs> you are here uh, maybe you can you can take a particular uh, pitch toward uh, your, your your specific uh, master Yes, sure. Uh, I would say that uh, and there is a number of courses which are somehow shared, you know, like a, a, a couple of core courses, I would say, uh, which are shared, even though we have given them different angles, you know, for instance, you know, in particular, you know, the, the um, uh, course, which is uh, in um, machine learning, it's uh, like a core course, which is offered to different departments, but we have uh, exercitation, we have specific parts which are dedicated to the quantity biology on one end, to data science on the other hand. So this is something which has even more to have mixed culture between different aspects. So basically you can find your real home. If you're really interested into biology and you are a computer scientist, then probably the quantitative uh, biology master is the, is the best one. If you're are more aimed at data science in general than data science is the best, but you get the similar skill in the, in the end and um, uh, you get exposure to uh, different um, uh, culture as well, because when you follow uh, an exam, which is given by a, a professor in physics who is giving his point of view on the uh, analysis of big data through physical model, then it's really, a, a, I would say a new, uh, a new achievement, which is not possible where you have people from the same department coming and trying to force, you know, to, to, uh, to teach you something across, uh, spread over different topics. Okay, thank you. Uh, for uh, the last question, be because I would answer many more, but uh, we, we, we really have, uh, uh, have, uh, have completed our time. So I will take a few one or two minutes for one last question. And this last question could be answered by myself and by uh, Claudio. And, and the question here is, uh, what are the differences between uh, the, the, the taking a master in artificial intelligence systems and taking a master in uh, uh, data science? Okay, as far as I can say, I give my part of the answer, then you can uh, pick up and, and give yours. Um, uh, from, from my point of view, uh, artificial intelligence system is for starter an engineering degree. So it's aimed at designing systems. So it uses uh, the achievements from many different parts of uh, uh, artificial intelligence in order to create systems that are uh, competitive, that can be put on the market, can, can be uh, robust and can deliver the service they, 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 they are meant for. Uh, data science, I see it more as a science. So <laughs> trying uh, to understand what are the properties of data and uh, uh, how can they tell something about the phenomenon that we want uh, to, to analyze. But this part uh, I leave uh, to Claudio. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, what I would like, I, I mainly agree uh, with a little difference, perhaps, Luigi. Uh, the point I think is that uh, data science is more broad in its uh, aims. So, so not only artificial intelligence uh, is much more broad. And uh, the other point I think that uh, your, the program in artificial intelligence systems is more hard in the sense the hardware rather than the, the degree in data science is more soft in sense of software. Uh, so I think this is one of the main differences, okay? The other difference is that uh, uh, is the data science program as it is designed is more interdisciplinary. We have a lot of people coming not from the engineering part. Uh, and obviously uh, he has the benefit and he has also some, some drawbacks. Uh, I don't know if you, Luigi, you agree, and perhaps you want to recap again, <laughs> just, to, okay. just to make things more clear. 
Okay, let, let, let's say that uh, both programs are interdisciplinary, but in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay, because because in our in our case, we borrow from uh, several disciplines that are more or less related uh, to engineering, and uh, uh, but we also consider ethical implications. Uh, and, and and as I say, that we want to create uh, systems that do things that deliver. Um, interact with people, and, and the broad of application and the range of application is 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 quite large in both cases, I would say. But uh, you know, so at the end of the day, uh, I think it's uh, very much a matter of uh, choosing, uh, making the choice that suits better the you know the the the, the Ambition of the person, uh, so so uh, the 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 personal taste uh, to 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 some degree, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think uh, more information can be found in in the websites and also looking back at this presentation, which will be available on YouTube. And so uh, perhaps uh, and and anyway, we are available for follow up uh, discussions. Yeah, yeah. After. Uh, Luigi, I agree with you. I think that uh, students uh, that has this. Uh, Problem of deciding uh, among the two pro um, uh, between the two programs, they can always reach us, uh, you, me, and and Ivano Bison, if they want to speak with the director uh, to discuss uh, what they are thinking to do after their degree, and we can make uh, obviously suggestions. Okay, I I don't think we have more time because we are really gone very far with this event. I hope. Uh, you all enjoyed. I don't know if any of you has anything more to add, but I would uh, close the event here. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you. And see you soon in Trento. <laughs>